August went by very fast, though it yielded us some really good iOS and Android games. Today, GameRanks brings you the 10 best new iOS and Android games of August 2016. Just a quick note, there are paid games on this list, and we also do a list of the best new free iOS and Android games that will be coming in a few days. Number 10, Seralim 2 is an old school monster catching roguelike RPG. It's randomly generated, it never ends, it goes on and on and on forever, and as you may know, that's a good thing for a phone game, because sometimes you get these really good games on the phone, and then you're stuck in line or in a waiting room, and you can't really play it again because it would be boring to repeat the same content. Fortunately, Seralim 2 avoids this issue by giving you an upgradable castle to build and various endless amounts of quests. There's a crafting system, a breeding system, and no level caps because the game continues to scale its difficulty as you progress. Number 9, the manga works. If you've ever thought that you should have a game that simulates the career of a manga artist, well, they finally made it. And it is actually a pretty damn entertaining game. When you sit down and get into the mechanics, it plays a lot like various tycoon games that you've played through the years, except it has a weirdly personal touch to it. It feels a lot more like it revolves around you, a single person, whereas a lot of those games do not. And that's often what Japanese titles of this genre do that American ones don't. It's a fun game, it's got great pixel art, and manages to keep your attention, which as the ever-expanding library of mobile titles continues to explode, it's always good to have a game like that. Number 8, Jurassic Go. While not an officially licensed product, yes, the name might be a little bit confusing, it's actually more aptly titled than its subtitle, Dinosaur Snap Adventures. Go is most likely there to associate it with Pokemon Go a little bit because it is a very large amount like Pokemon Snap which depending on your view on Pokemon Snap will make a big difference over whether you want this because it's not a game for everyone. It's essentially you're on rails and you take pictures of Pokemon, except for now in this case, it's dinosaurs, cutesy dinosaurs, mind you, which is its biggest departure from quote unquote Jurassic on account that's associated with very realistic dinosaur images. Fans of Pokemon Snap will enjoy this, especially since there hasn't been anything like that in quite a while. Number seven, Agricola is an adaption of the award-winning board game that puts you in charge of starting a farm and growing it from a tiny little fledgling farm to a large and thriving farm. It's a two-player board game, and they do a great job of recreating that, giving you PvP cross-platform multiplayer that you can do locally, as well as against players from anywhere in the world. Number six, The Quest HD, which is a very pretty open-world role-playing game with a grid-based movement system that you might remember from older RPGs and turn-based combat. Now, it harkens back to a very old type of game, which was a genre that always looked very rudimentary, given it was made somewhat out of the necessity of games not looking that great in 3D. But it takes it up a notch. It really, really looks good, stylistically and technically. The menu system could maybe use a little bit of work, but not a lot. It has a day and night cycle too, so that's pretty fun, as well as a very customizable character system, lots of spells, and an intriguing story. Number 5, Deus Ex Go, which is nothing like Pokemon Go. As a matter of fact, it's actually by the people who did Hitman Go and Lara Croft Go, and turns the puzzle-based movement of those games to the Deus Ex universe. If you're familiar with these games at all, this is absolutely a very good title. It takes those mechanics, it applies them to what you know of Deus Ex, and it's extremely fun. On top of that, there is a new puzzle every single day. Number four, Space Marshals 2 is a sci-fi Wild West adventure in outer space that I would call a tactical combat slash stealth game. It's a top-down game, but manages to set itself apart graphically by being both colorful and easy to differentiate what's going on on screen. It kind of reminds me of Team Fortress a little bit, graphically speaking, actually, and not in a bad way, in a good way. I do enjoy the cover system, and you can actually do some pretty well-thought-out attacks, or even just going the stealth route can be very satisfying. I, I actually preferred to do it that way. Also, the silent takedowns, just uh, try it just for that. It, it, they're cool as hell. Number three, Riptide GP Renegade, which reminded me somewhere between Wave Race 64 
and Wipeout from the PlayStation. And I have to say, that's pretty cool, because these are not two things that I would normally think to combine. It's really neat because it combines a lot of the elements that you might see from Wave Race, actual nature-oriented type obstacles, as well as some of the more industrial type obstacles that you might see in a Wipeout style game. It has really good multiplayer options, including online and split screen, as well as a really good career mode. So give it a shot, especially if you like either of those games. Number two, Leap of Fate is another top-down shooter that is very distinctive looking. And to have two of them that come out in one month that are actually this good, it's awesome. It's pretty different from the previous game. The controls for this game are very, very fluid and has a great play style. On top of that, the cyberpunk aesthetic is easy to fall for because, well, I am a child of the 90s. This one also gets a little bit deeper with some interesting randomly generated skill trees, and the game itself has literally hundreds of missions. It's a great game. It plays so fluidly, and frankly, if this is going to be the month of the good top-down shooter on mobile, I'm fine with that. And finally, number one is Reigns, which I have to say is possibly the most bizarre game this month, but at the same time, it's so cool, I couldn't ignore it. Okay, so it plays like a card game combined with Tinder, and if that isn't the most intriguing thing you've heard today, I don't know what isn't. But at the same time, instead of putting down the cards, you swipe left or right to perform an action on them. It gives you various statistic changes and actions that happen. It prompts you, and you have to continue to do actions. Very, very simple, but at the same time, very satisfying. You can kind of preview what what's going to happen a little bit in some cases by swiping a little bit. And also on top of that, the music is provided by the person who did the Fez soundtrack, Disaster Piece. Oh, who also did Hyper Light Drifter. Just like two games with some of the best music, period. In all honesty, this is a must play. Just try it. It's so unique and so fun. What was your favorite iOS or Android game this month? Let us know in the comments. We would love to have a discussion with you about that. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. And if you're not subscribe now is a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every single day of the week the best way to see them first is of course a subscription as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks